Uh, welcome to today's lecture on list practice. We've already gone over shallow copies last time, so let's just skip that. <clears throat> so now I want to work on this question. Uh, I want to make a piece of code that checks if a list of teams satisfies the condition that no student is on two teams, two or more teams, that every person is only on one team. So let's do this. Let me create, what day is it today? Wednesday? Tuesday? Tuesday. Let me code this up. I'm just going to import my typing module so I can use list. No, from typing import list. And what did I call this? Valid teams. Okay, so define valid teams. It's going to take x's, or maybe it's going to take teams, which is a list of list of integers. And what is this going to return? Anyone? Boolean, right? So maybe I'm going to call this is valid teams just to be square with our naming strategy. So this checks to see that no student is on more than one team. Uh, I'm going to do some checks. So is valid teams. Uh, if there's no teams at all, that's valid because it doesn't uh, fail the condition. So is valid teams. Oh boy, teams. Uh, let's make three teams here. Uh, let's make this minus one, three, two, and then minus one, four. All right, so this should be false because there's a minus one in two lists. And let's just do a valid one. I'll change this to a three, four, five. Okay. That should be false. Oh, um, one, four, five, zero, four, five. Okay. So I want to return a Boolean. So what do I have to do? Well, I want to at least look at every team. So for team, one team in the list of teams, what do I want to do? Any ideas for this one, right? Because like I can code this quite easily, but we have to think about like, how would you do this as a human before typing it into, into the computer? Like I think I would look at a team and look at its first member and then look at all the rest of the teams to see if that member is in the rest of the teams. Does that sound sensible? Okay, so for a team in teams, I want to look at a student in this team. And now I want to look again at all the teams, right? I want something like, um, so again, look at this team in teams. And if student is in this team, then what do I have to do? I need to make sure that uh, this doesn't happen twice, right? So for each student, I'm going to have a count for the number of teams. So, so far, this student is on zero teams. Um, if the student uh, is in this team, then I want to increment by one, right? Number of teams plus equal one. And then furthermore, uh, if the number of teams is greater than one, then I can ret whoops, yeah, yeah. Um, if you initialize the variable number Yeah, but I haven't found the team that he, that the student's in yet. Like another team or the team that you found? Well, I don't have I don't have a list of that team minus that team, right? Like, like you're, you're already looking. I know the student is in one team, right? But like, so I'm looking, I have to, first I have to access all the students, right? And then I have to look at a student and then count the number of teams that that student is in, right? So what you're recommending is start at one, but then what that would mean is that then have to skip that team, which is gonna introduce another control structure. So I'm just gonna start it from zero, right? So, will it, cause we'll, this method will find the team that the student is in, right? Okay, so the number of teams is greater than one, return false, else return true. I think I did this way simpler for the other class. So maybe I'm just too tired today. Let's see if this works. Uh, Python, oh, I'm not on my desktop. Python interactive mode, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Where is this? Oh, it's my home directory.
Let's try this again. Python Tuesday. Great. Okay, so let's try some of our doc examples here. That's true. Is this a valid team? That's true. Ah, so I have to do some debugging. What about this? And that. Oh, I wrote vald. Valid, valid, valid. Okay, anyway, it's broken anyway, so let's see what I did wrong. For a team in teams, for student in this team, I want to count the number of teams the student is on. So for this team in teams, if the student is in this team, the number of teams increments by one. And if the number of teams is greater than one, return false. That should work. So let's just, just give this another try. So what, what is happening here? Huh? Is valid teams is defined. Oh, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. I have to close this. Okay, let's try again. Uh, this was the one that was broken. That's not a valid team. Great. Okay, this should be a valid team. Perfect. Okay, so it did work. Okay. Um, so I want to show you a more Pythonic way of doing this. So like this is the way maybe that um, most people would be mo most comfortable with because I'm only using the, the very basic structures here. I want to show you a more advanced way, uh, which is considered more Pythonic, but let me tell you this first. You can sum any list. Right? Uh, you can sum a 0, 1 list, right? something like this. Okay, And remember this thing with list comprehension? So let's say I have teams. And I make a list comprehension. I say, I want a list comprehension. I'm going to call this x. And I want to know if 1 is in this team for team in teams. What is this going to produce? Right? It's checking the proposition 1 is in team for each team in teams. Right? So team gets set to 1, 2, and 1 is in that, right? Then team gets sent to 1, 4, and 1 is in that. How about this one? Uh, 4 is in team, or team in teams. False. False, true, false. This is a good strat, like this is a useful strategy, that's why I'm showing it to you. What's this? Remember that these are just numbers like any other numbers. True, false isn't really that special. False just represents 0, true represents 1. Um, so what does it mean? If I ask for the sum of uh, 1 in team for team and teams. Yeah, but what is it telling me? Well, it's telling me how many teams 1 is on in one line. OK, so I'm going to delete some of, I'm going to delete all of this, basically. Right? If the sum of student in this team for this team in teams is greater than 1, return false. Ah, go away. Go away. So that should also work. Pretty cool. Thanks. So I, I'm told you this list comprehension stuff can get very useful. Yeah. Well, what happens when all the ones collapse away? 
Like, why, why, I don't understand. What's the point of making it a list? No, we're making it a set. What a set? Like, like, which list? The list of teams or the list of students in the teams? Um, teams. So you have a list of teams, and you want to make that a unique list? Yeah, that's why I'm saying unique. Uh, okay, so a set, a list without duplicates. You want to change it to a list without duplicates. No, the duplicates are within like the, I'm not saying that two teams are identical. I'm saying there's one member, say Bob, who's on two teams. I'm not sure like using sets is going to identify that. Yeah. We know that every student has unique uh, interest or ID, right? Yeah. So if we do uh, all the students, then we would have like, a certain number that all those members have up to. What if we took the numeric sum of every team and did the sum of all the teams in the big team? Uh, and some sums aren't unique. One plus three is the same as two plus two. Plus I negative numbers. You're not going to get unique sums, right, adding up the teams. And anyways, this is way simpler than that technique, right? In order to get, okay, you're, you're going to realize this in your programming career. The only way to get unique numbers from, like, other numbers is to, like, use prime numbers and, like, make prime factors, right? You'd need to take, you'd need one prime for, like, every student, and then you'd need to, like, take a team and then construct what integer you get from that prime factorization, right? Just... Co try to come up with two teams that would give you the same number for like any system that you would do. You're going to fail every time. It's just not possible. Yeah. Yeah. The empty list is, does it fail our base case? Let's check. No, you didn't type it in right because teams would be empty. Look, look at the code. If teams is empty, it goes right to true. Right, so I'll, you may have one team that's an empty team. That may be wrong. Oh, no, that's true as well. Yeah, I don't. It was a typo. Okay, well, that's called an error in computer science. <laughs> um, okay, so that was fun. Error. Um, okay, so I want to do more. So that's a lab. I made this a lab question. Oh, so I asked you to do matrix transpose over the weekend. Did anyone do it? Good hustle, guys. Um, <laughs> so the, do you guys know matrix multiplication? Who doesn't know matrix multiplication? Okay, like many of you, right? So when I said, do you guys know matrix multiplication? You should, some of you should have protested and said no. Because I, I did the whole matrix multiplication program in the other class just for them at the end to say, we have no idea what this is. We, we've never done matrix multiplication. I'm like, great, right? So... I'm not going to do matrix multiplication because many of you don't know what it is. I will do matrix transpose because that's fairly easy to understand. And then instead of doing the matrix multiplication, I'm going to do the power list, which was a lab question, but I think it has a few interesting answers. Okay, matrix transpose. Very easy. Do you guys know what a matrix is? Right, so in math, we get to invent whatever numbers we want, right? We started with writing numbers like this, and then maybe like this, and then maybe like this. Um, but basically, we get to make up any structures that we like, provided they just satisfy a bunch of uh, properties, um, which you can learn about in algebra, right? They have to be groups or rings or fields. Um, so of course, I can extend the number system to just like arrangements of the number system. Okay. So I can call this as a matrix A, it's just a group of numbers. It's a group that has one, two, three rows. So this is a row, and it has one, two columns. Okay. You're going to represent a matrix like this in a computer as a list of rows. And we sometimes just write it like this, so it looks more like a matrix, right? Okay. Uh, how many elements does this list have? So the length of the list gives what? The number of rows or the number of columns? It's the number of columns. Rows, okay? 
So if this is A, the length of A is equal to the number of rows of A. How do I get the number of columns? Number of elements in each. Okay, but they all should be the same, so. Yes, number of elements in the first row. Sure. Um, you just look at this guy. You look at the, so the uh, length of A at zero, that should be equal to the number of columns of, of the matrix. Right? Just looking at this element here. Okay, so this is a matrix. This is how we represent it in Python as a list of rows. And this is what the matrix transpose is. So the matrix transpose Okay. Um, swap the rows and columns of A okay. to obtain a transpose, which we denote with this T up here. Okay. Here, this is much more complicated than it needs to be. I just need to exchange the rows and columns of A. So if A is written over there, A transpose is what? It's, right? So if the original matrix has two rows and three columns, the transpose matrix is going to have three columns and two rows, right? We're inverting the rows and columns. Uh, so this first row gets the first column, one, three, five. And the second row gets the second column, two, four, six. So you're all sort of savvy with that. So I just want to take a matrix that looks like that and exchange its rows and columns so that it looks like that. And the reason I was asking you to do this is because it actually makes the matrix product really easy once you have the matrix transpose. But I'll let your linear algebra teachers teach you matrix product. Right? It's interesting. And a good computer science question. And a good question in general. And very useful. I may get married to matrix multiplication one day, have little matrix babies. Okay, so let's write the matrix transpose. And I think this one's good because uh, I'm going to have to use two different types of loops. So I'm going to take in, uh, I'm just going to use this double A because it's close to this blackboard bold that we use in mathematics. So this is going to be a list of lists, and I'm going to say integers. And we're going to return a matrix again, list of list of integer. Uh, to give you a idea, thank you, of what is to come, um, one day, perhaps, if you continue on in your computer science career, you will be able to define your own type in Python or an object. right? And Because in this case, it would be very sensible to create another matrix type, right? So we could like write some, because we can tell Python how to print a type, for example. So we could go write a print function for matrices so that every time we print a matrix, it doesn't print a list of lists, it prints, prints it in this nice form, right? So uh, that's some more advanced stuff. So this will uh, invert rows and columns of A. Uh, this should take the empty matrix to the empty matrix. This should take, what is the smallest matrix I can have that's not zero? Just one, row, one, one row, one column. So how do I write that? A list of a list that has one element. So that, that is the next smallest example besides the empty list. This should return itself. And now I'm just going to do the one that was on the board. So this is a list. So this is how I recommend building these lists of lists. You create a list, then you like write your lists inside those lists, just so you get the bracketing right. So this should be one, two, three, four, five, six, and it should return a list of two lists, which is one, three, five, two, four, six. Okay. So I'm going to accumulate an answer. So here's my answer. What should I start accumulating from? What am I returning? I'm returning a list of lists, so I should, I should start accumulating from an empty list. right? You're always accumulating 
from the zero of the top data type that you're returning. Eventually, I'm going to return this list or this answer. You see how I'm working here? Like, I'm not writing the code top to bottom. I'm putting in the pieces as I need them. I can move them around if I choose to. That's the benefit of typing into a computer. But don't, it's not like writing an essay. You're not, well, you shouldn't even write an essay like that. But don't do it top to bottom, right? Put in the pieces and start moving them around as, as they were. So what do I need to do here? So this is tough, right? Because um, this would be easy if I could do like matrix indexing. Right, but I don't want to do that. I want to do this in a Pythonic way. Right, so I'm limited to looking at AA by its rows. Right, so I can only pull out rows of A one at a time. So what's a strategy about building columns where I look at the rows one at a time? Right, so there's the matrix on the board. Right, my for loop, if I do this, if I say for a row of A, in AA, and I start processes, processing it, what is the first row of, that it's going to pull out? 1, 2, right? So suppose now I want to construct, I also want to construct, uh, I'm going to construct the answer by constructing rows of the answer and then appending to the answer, right? So how can I build a row of the answer? A row of the answer should be a column of AA. Right, so I've pulled out the first row, I get 1, 2, then what do I do? You append row AA0. Row answer uh, dot append uh, row of AA at 0, right? So I pull out the first row, I take the 0th element out. Then I take the second row, I take the 0th element out and append it. I take the third row, I take the 5 out, and I append it. And then what do I do? Well, I then have to say... Uh, to my answer appends one row of the answer. Okay, so this is going to get me the zeroth column, right? Or the first column. I need to now make this happen for all of the columns, right? So I just, yeah. Sure, how about I just use the for loops? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what do we need here? We need the number of columns, right? So what are the number of columns of A? Length of A, A of 0. Okay, let's think about what we just did. We have to be smart. This can throw an error in what case? Yeah. Here, we have presumed already that A is indexable. Right? If it's not indexable, this is going to throw an error. Right? And I said in the doc string that this should accept an empty one. This is part of our contract to be able to handle empty lists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to do, but that's not Pythonic. Okay, so like, I'm going to show you three different ways of doing this, of testing if this list is zero, and, I'm, and the last way is going to be the way that you need to do it. So first we can say if the length of A is equal to zero, then return the empty list, right? I'm just going to check for the empty case. That's one way. Uh, not very good. The other way of doing it is you just test this directly and return empty. Um, also not very good. The Pythonic way of doing it. What did I say that was the Boolean of anything empty? False. And anything full is true, right? So if not empty is what this is testing, right? Wait. It, no, if not full. If it is not the case that this is full, then return empty, right? So this is testing if A is empty, right? So I know it's, conf I hate this notation for this reason, but th this is the Pythonic PEP8 way of doing it, right? So tests, well, this is equivalent to, um, equivalent to AA is empty, um, which is, itself equivalent to uh, length of AA is zero. Okay, so this is fine now, right? Because we've now, at this point, we know that the matrix has at least one element. Because if it didn't, we would have returned it. So, I now know the number of columns. I want to change this to a K, which I've done. Now I want to walk the number of columns. We have range for that now. This has to move out by one. 
this row answer has to be inside the loop. Okay, so let's look at the structure of this, right? So I'm going to pick the column that I want to build. Um, I, I'm going to pick the column that I want to pull out and load into one row of the answer, right? So I'm going to start with k equals zero. The row of answer is going to be set to an empty list because I'm starting to build it. I'm going to pull out all the rows of A and pull out the kth element of each of those rows and build a row. And then I'm going to append that row to my row of answers. So let's, let's give this a try. Uh, matrix transpose of empty. This should be empty. Matrix transpose of a single thing should be a single thing. And this is the real test. 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, it worked. Um, so that's great. Okay, so that wasn't too hard, but this is an example where you sort of have to think first and then type, right? Don't, don't rush to the computer to start programming. You really have to ponder about this. Um, like think if you had like a dumb younger brother or sister and you had to like explain to your like four-year-old brother or sister like how to do a matrix transpose. That, that's basically how you have to see the computer like a toddler that only understands like a limited amount of stuff. All right, so you have to treat these things like math problems first. Okay, so I have 10 minutes. Um, this lecture is really riddled of practice questions that you should try in preparation for your midterm. This one's quite interesting. Well, not really interesting, but it's a good coding problem. Um, so suppose you have an integer like 234. Uh, represent that integer by a list, 2, 3, 4. And now give me a, a function that can add two integers together with this representation, returning them in the list representation. It's a good problem because you have to worry about carries. Right? There's going to be a lot of if statements that you have to worry about. Right? OK, so add the first thing. If it's greater than 10, then this is a 0 and carry the 1. So you're going to have to write some type of statement like that. So it's a good programming question. This is hard, so don't, don't try it too much. Right? If you have a list of lists of lists of lists that are like uh, arbitrarily embedded, I want you to remove all of the brackets except for the outer ones. This is called the list flatten. Um, so this one's actually kind of difficult if you wanted to give it a try. Um, to do it without recursion, you need a stack. You need to use this pop that I showed you in order to solve this. Okay, there is another question though that I wanted to do today because it demonstrates a couple of nice things. It's this, it's this power list. Do you remember this from the lab? I'll show you what it did. So this is going to take a list of integers and return a list of list of integers. Uh, returns the mathematical. This is actually called a power set. OK, so your lab did something like this. So if I get, is there a question anywhere out there? Hear a lot of chatter. Any questions? No? OK. Um, do you know what a subset is or a sublist? OK. I think you can basically figure out what I would mean by a sublist, right? If I give you the list 1, 2, 3, a sublist is just a list where you remove some of those elements, right? So 1 is a sublist of 1, 2, 3. 1, 2 is a subset of 1, 2, 3. 1, 3 is a subset of 1, one 2, 3. What the power list is going to do is return a list of all such sublists of the list, right? So how many sublists are there of this list? Three things. And it teaches some combinatorics, right? So I told you a sublist is just the original list with some members removed, right? So really, you're asking yourself the question as you walk through the list, do I keep this element or throw it away, right? So how many options are there for the first thing? Two. How many options for the second thing? So how, how many options for the third thing? So how many options altogether? Eight. Two to the power of three. Perfect. So there should be eight sublists here, right? And we're going to use that. We're going to use the very same algorithm that I just stated here with like the removing and uh, including things. So the power list of this, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna build it like this, right? So exclude, 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 right? That's the empty list. Okay, exclude, exclude, include, right? That's going to be zero, uh, three, right? Uh, exclude, include, exclude. That's going to be two, 
exclude include include that's going to be um, two three and we're going to continue this uh, procedure right one okay remember that thing about binary that I taught you that like freaked all of you out this is actually the binary number zero this is actually the binary number one this is actually the binary number two this is the binary number three binary number four right so we can actually take this all the way to the binary number for seven right so that's eight numbers zero through seven Right, so the binary numbers in this case actually give you a direct encoding of the list that you need to take out. Right, do you see that? How I, I've written that here? Okay, so to solve this problem, right, this is why I wanted to show it to you, because like you have to solve this problem mathematically and then code it. I want to just do exactly this. If I have a list of say length four, then I want to look at all the binary numbers zero through two to the power of four, uh, and then just pick off the list elements I need using this pattern, right? So I'm sure I can do this in the next five minutes. I'm just going to return an answer here. What answer, what should my answer start being? What, empty list, because I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, blah, 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 blah. My return type is a list. OK, so the length of the list I can get. So I want to say 4 k in the range of the length of, length of x's. OK, so now I need to do two things. I need to take my k, and I need to convert it to a binary number. Uh, the binary number of set 6 is this, 7, 8, 1, right? So it's returning a string. And it's saying, uh, this string is a binary number, right? That's that 0b. And the binary number is 1, 1, 0. Right, so what I actually have to do is I have to kick off the first two elements. Whoops. What? Oh, this is one, six. Right, so I get one, one, zero here when I kick out the first two elements. So that gives me, um, this gives me the, the, the binary numbers. But the problem here is if I ask for something small, I get just one. So I, I really do need the zeros in front of it. So there's something called Z fill here. And I can just fill this with zeros. Uh, it will fill this with zeros up to three, right? Okay, so these are the two tools we need to solve this problem. Okay, because I want to say, I want to look at my binary pattern maybe, and this is going to be converting this number k to binary, kicking out the zero b part of the string, then filling to the length of x's, right? I, I need. Wait, was it the length of x's? Okay, first of all, this is wrong. I need to go the length. I need to go to two to the number of two the length of x's. Yeah, then this is going to be filled to the length of x's. Um, so what I have here then is just where's my thing? I have that type of pattern. So now I want to break that pattern up, which I can do with list comprehension. So I'm going to do this, right? Uh, integer casts this as an x for x in this binary string, right? To get 0, 0, 1 back from the from what what it used to be. Uh, so there's my bin pattern. I'm just going to break this across two lines. Binary pattern is equal to uh, integer x for x in the binary pattern. So that should give me a 0, 1 pattern back. And now I need to append to my answer uh, the power list, right? So how can I do this? I want to do Mm. How can I do this? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, I'm just going to do it the simplest way. 4b in the binary pattern. Uh, how did I do this? Now there's a very simple way of doing this. Where did I put it? I solved this just the other day. Okay, um, it's on Piazza because <laughs> I put it there. Uh, nope, it's this one. 
How do I, oh, here? How did I do this? Uh, where is it? This one, okay. It's not my day, oh my god. Okay, uh, X, X for X and X is if keep this. Okay, I see. Okay. So I want to, to my answer, I want to append something. And I want to append all of the X's that correspond to ones in the bin pattern. So I want to look at, uh, I want to say append X for X in X's if the binary pattern is a one at the index of x in x's. You may have to study this a bit to get it. But basically I'm saying, um, find where my x is positioned in x's. So suppose that like 2 is listed at the first position. And then look at my bi binaries pattern first position. If it's a 1, keep it. If it's a 0, get rid of it. So let's see. And there's one more cool thing I want to show you after this. How much time do I got? I could do it in one minute. Uh, power list, let's just check this out. What? Maybe I can't do this in one minute. What did I do? Oh, if. Okay, you know what? I give up. Go, go, leave. I, I feel shame. <laughs> no!